So what do the event organizers and DJs who have quite the power have to say on their part? This court calls to the doc, Mbogu Angogi. What kind of performance were you doing? In the 80s, I was a DJ and uh, was a successful DJ on the circuit of uh, private engagements as well as club engagements and then transitioned out of that into now, like I said, managing artists. Kenyan music is not as popular or as appreciated or as welcome um, in Kenya compared to sometimes Nigerian music, South African. Do you first agree with that assessment? If one were to reflect backwards to the 70s and the 80s, you'd find, particularly for performing artists, you find that during that time there was a really solid base that was set. And I say this because at the time South Africa went into the apartheid period, most of the recording studios that were domiciled in South Africa came up to, Ken to Kenya. And so you had majors like EMI, Equatorial, ASL, African Gramophone Company, all based here in Nairobi, producing top quality music. Previously, that industry was very well uh, financed and it was very well managed. And it was managed in such a way that you had within, say, a recording house, like EMI, had an AR department, an artist and repertoire, to go out there searching for the very best of the Kenyans, putting them on vinyl, which was the format of music at that time, and distributing it. So those are distinct functions. If you look at the artists today, if you look at the DJs today, no one to manage them, they manage themselves. And that is a very big difference with South Africa, where you have major uh, record companies like Gallo, who go out and seek uh, artists, bring them in, record them, and promote them. This is not happening in Kenya. Who are we hoping can invest in these artists that is not doing it now? First of all, it starts with government being proactive and saying to young Kenyans or to Kenyans in general that this is a viable industry and we are going to create an enabling environment for this viable industry. Secondly, it takes people like myself to say shillings and cents. I'm going to pick up an artist, I'm going to put them through the motions of getting them ready for international exposure, and then sending them outside, but with the proper infrastructure. The content of music, um, when you compare, say, to Tanzania, Tanzanians are more poetic. Um, some will criticize Kenya for saying some of our music is, as they say, ratchet. Could that be also a contributing factor? Outside there, the established practice, like I said, is to give the artist support, which means you have writers who will come in and write a song. You have a producer who will come in and put together the beats. And then your recording house will facilitate the two of you to get to, or the three of you to get together and put out a song. And then it goes out there, it's distributed. So right now you have artists who have no clue about even writing a song. They have no forward sight on what's the direction of the market going so that they can align their music to what the, art, to what the, the listening public wants to hear. And uh, as a result of them struggling like this, Tanzania is just an outlier, um, and a, a lucky one. But if you look at the Nigerian industry, that one is continuous. Right from the time of Fela Kuti, till today, his sons are in the industry. It's continuous. They have an established industry. Mr. G has just submitted to this court that he has had to he has gone through situations where he's been asked to pay have you experienced that or heard of it or well this is uh, something that but i can't say that this is unique to kenya um, america for a very long time had this same problem uh, but they got past it because of the strength of the studios that they that they built and such that when a music studio puts out a track then, like I said, they support it all the way. What would you say are some of the things that are key factors to be considered for someone to be drafted to be, you know, a performing artist at an event? An unknown artist has no ability to, to, to uh, possibly pull uh, an audience to an event. And so you'll always have to headline, un unfortunately for Mr. G, with an artist that is well established. Then that becomes the brand and the face of that event. And so it doesn't mean that we ignore them. What we do is we pair them. We pair them, and I think this is a methodology that will help them. 
So if uh, Saudi Soul is opening, I'm sorry to mention an artist, that's but okay. if Saudi Soul is performing as the last act of the evening, because that's when you want it to happen, so people stay, they'll be exposed to artists like uh, Mr. G and others, as well as the DJs, um, whilst that audience is there. And hopefully that can build traction for a career for them. Okay. And what about the events where we see, um, and no, they're not your events necessarily, yeah. but where we see um, a, a Tanzanian coming to headline an event in Kenya? If really we were doing that well, could you afford to ignore a Kenyan artist in place of a Tanzanian? I so don't think so. Some argue that we do have solid Kenyan artists who could take on the, you know, the international ones. That even as you're complaining about being overlooked by uh, promoters, and there's a business objective that they are going after, and that is to fill the coffers. And if you as a Kenyan artist don't have the same demand in another country, even your neighboring country, mm. it means you're not there yet. So there have been calls for saying that there should be, you know, 70% um, local content being played across the board, really. A discerning audience member wants to hear something that is engaging, attractive, and fun to listen to. And you can't shove things down their throats. Do well. I promise you, Kenyans will come to your support. So you don't think there's a need for legislation? Legislation is not the way to go. Improving the product to the point where it's a compelling argument to pick up that product. That's the direction we need to be looking. Thank you very much, Bona Mbogo Angugi, for you making your submissions. You may have your seat.